Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Scientists in the United Kingdom have reported findings that could change our understanding of lightning. Researchers at the University of Reading's Department of Meteorology have discovered a link between charged particles from the sun and increased lightning on Earth. According to an article on the Institute of Physics website, the team found a substantial and significant increase in lightning rates across Europe for up to 40 days after the arrival of high-speed solar winds. The article also states, although the exact mechanism that causes these changes remains unknown, the researchers propose that the electrical properties of the air are somehow altered as the incoming charged particles from the solar wind collide with the atmosphere. However, rather than resulting from mechanical collisions, the electric universe theory states that lightning on Earth and other planets indicates an electrical circuitry between the planets and the sun. Back in 2002, I wrote on my website in an article called The Balloon Goes Up Over Lightning. In August 2001, a high-altitude balloon was sent aloft to ride far above the great storms of the Midwest USA. Researchers had sent the balloon, like a dark rider out of Tolkien, riding into the moonless night seeking sprites, gnomes and the ring of the elves. Professor Edgar Baring, a physicist at the University of Houston in Texas, was trying to understand sprites, those strange phenomena, lightning discharges above thunderstorms that stretch upwards to the ionosphere. So he sent a balloon up above storms to try and find out what was going on. The biggest surprise from that experiment was that the electric charge to produce the sprites and the lightning below in the thunderstorms was already there. It wasn't generated from below. So in other words, the electricity was coming from space. So it's no surprise that this recent study, which found a correlation between energetic streams of particles from the sun and an increase in lightning, was found because this fits with the electric universe model, that the energy for lightning storms comes from the same circuit that actually powers the sun. Now Venus is closer to the sun than the Earth is, and it was found to have lightning, but this was a surprise because as one side has said, you don't expect lightning in smog because Venus doesn't have water clouds like the Earth does. So the fact that Venus also had lightning shows that it is something that's coming from beyond the planet, from the Sun. And it's also known that Venus is wrapped in these so-called magnetic ropes, but the magnetic ropes themselves are merely euphemisms for Birkeland currents, electric currents from the Sun wrapping itself around Venus. And also wrapping very closely to the ionosphere of Venus, which means that there is quite strong coupling. When we go into the outer solar system, we find some of the most powerful storms ever seen in the solar system on Jupiter and on Saturn. The lightning on Saturn is up to a thousand to ten thousand times more powerful than that on Earth. Of course, this is attributed to water clouds somewhere deep in the atmosphere. But the intensity and the concentration of the power, particularly on the great storm on Saturn of a few years ago, isn't explained by just water clouds uh, moving up and down in the atmosphere, convecting and uh, generating an electric current. Because even on Earth, this mechanism has been found to be totally inadequate to explain the electric fields required to generate a lightning stroke. Something else is needed. What's more, the energy that drives the currents up and down in a storm cloud is supposed to be solar heat energy. But the clouds themselves turn off that heat energy to a large extent, and so it begs the question of cause and effect. It's known that lightning, for instance, ejects matter upwards along the lightning channel. And electric discharges can be in the form rather like an air ionizer and cause a wind so these vertical winds are much more easily explained as being one more effect of the electricity which is already existing in the atmosphere from the sun and which forms lightning when you get clouds because clouds form a kind of intermediary between the ionosphere and the ground on the earth. They sit close, fairly close to the earth 
in relation to the ionosphere, which is some 90 or 100 kilometres above the clouds. So the, if we didn't have clouds, we might suffer the kind of super bolts, as they were called, uh, that Venus suffers, and also Mars with its uh, huge um, electrical dust storms, which stretch from the ground to heights higher than Mount Everest. All of these things are explained simply from the electrical point of view, but they are a problem, they are a conundrum. They're unexplained by the present view of electrically sterile planets and an electrically sterile solar system. This latest discovery only underscores one of the many unresolved mysteries in solar physics, the acceleration of the solar wind as it moves away from the sun. Of course, the problem of lightning on Earth ties back to the problem of explaining how particles in the solar wind are accelerated as they move away from the sun. In other words, they defy the gravitational force of the sun and accelerate out beyond the planets. The same mechanism is involved in the production of lightning as in the acceleration of the solar wind. It's as simple as that. And the very fact that there are magnetic fields associated with the solar wind indicates that the charged particles do form electric currents because you do not get magnetic fields without an electric current. None of this features in any of this theorizing, which tends to turn towards misconceptions like magnetic reconnection and so on. One of the other aspects is, too, that it's expected that cosmic rays somehow contribute to lightning. But when the sun is more active, the cosmic ray count goes down. And yet here we have the high activity of a CME or a, a, an outburst from the sun arriving at the Earth. The cosmic ray rate goes down, but the lightning rate goes up. So it shows that this, too, this idea that cosmic rays uh, contribute to lightning production on Earth is also maybe not a direct cause and effect. In this series, Space News from the Electric Universe, we have documented many dozens of recent discoveries that challenge the consensus theories of the space sciences. However, institutional science and its proponents in popular media continue to move forward as if nothing has changed. Establishment science has gotten into the habit of ignoring, burying or suppressing what has now become astonishing amounts of anomalous evidence. Some of this evidence challenges the very foundations of the accepted scientific worldview, and none of it is taught in universities or covered by textbooks. Mention any of it to a mainstream scientist and odds are you will be dismissed as a crank or worse, a crackpot. The conclusion is sobering. Some of what passes for scientific fact these days is little more than a social construct. What is true and what is not is determined by the scientific prestige of the claimant, the predilections of journal editors and referees and by economic interests. A scientist who challenges the status quo becomes a persona non grata, banned from publication in journals and speaking on conferences, defunded, marginalised. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.